Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, scared before we're here bringing you another Minecraft World War II map to build tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and building the HMS Illustrious. HMS Illustrious was the lead ship of her class of aircraft carriers built for the Royal Navy before World War II. Her first assignment after completion and working up was with the Mediterranean Fleet, in which her aircraft's most notable achievement was sinking one Italian battleship and dam badly damaging two others during the Battle of Toronto in late 1940. Two months later, after the carrier was crippled by German dive bombers and was repaired in the United States, after some same damage on the voyage home in late 1941 by a collision with her sister ship Formidable, Illustrious was sent to the Indian Ocean in early 1942 to support the invasion of Vichy France Madagascar, Operation Ironclad. After returning home in early 1943, the ship was given a lengthy refit and briefly assigned to the home fleet. She was transferred to Force H of the Battle of Sarano in mid-1943 and then rejoined the Eastern Fleet in the Indian Ocean at the beginning of 1944. Her aircraft attacked several targets in Japanese-occupied Dutch Indies or Dutch East Indies over the following year before Illustrious was transferred to the newly formed British Pacific Fleet. The carrier participated in the early stages of the Battle of Okinawa until mechanical defects arising from accumulated battle damage became so severe she was ordered home early for repairs in May 1945. The war ended while she was in dry dock, and the Admiralty decided to modify her for use as the home fleet's trials and training carrier. In this role, she conducted the deck landing trials for most of the British post-war naval aircraft in the early 1950s. She was occasionally used to ferry troops and aircraft to and from foreign deployments, as well as participating in exercises. In 1951, she helped to transport troops to quell rioting in Cy Cyprus after the collapse of the Anglo-Egyptian Treaty of 1936. She was paid off in early 1955 and sold for scrap in late 1956. So yeah, the HMS Illustrious here, kind of a lengthy service record. It's all service quite of uh, quite around uh, different theaters in the uh, basically in World War II. Uh, but yeah, really nice uh, aircraft carrier and our first ever British um, World War II carrier, which is super nice to uh, finally get a carrier from them into our fleet of bathtub builds, and we'll go really good with some of the other. British uh, ships that we already have built up. Uh, before we go ahead and uh, jump in and take a look at the ship, though, I want to give a special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel where you guys already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. The link is always in my video descriptions where you can pledge a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so, or if you require a request or you're choosing, it really helps support the work I do on my channel and it's very greatly appreciated. So definitely feel free to check it out again if you're interested. Um, with that though, let's go and take a look here at the HMS Illustrious and see exactly where we'll be going ahead and building in this tutorial. So, beginning with, we have obviously the uh, bow here of the ship. Uh, pretty standard kind of British bow, very curved, um, kind of a weird shaped bow to you to say the least. Uh, I have various details here, the anchors, uh, little uh, slits there, and all that stuff. As we progress back, we have some second, where we pretty much have the primary armament, uh, which, are, you know, some nice sized guns, probably about 5 inch would be close and probably the caliber of these guns. Uh, we then have some masts here, the conning tower anti-aircraft guns located around it. Um, that right there is pretty much the conning tower and its mast and all that. As we work back further we have again some more details here, the crane on the side, life various lifeboats and uh, again more of the uh, batteries here. And of course the back of the ship, the stern, nothing too uh, special about that. And over here, same pretty much thing, just the uh, various beds and, or not beds, but various lifeboats and uh, different little openings and stuff like that throughout the ship. So, uh, yeah, that pretty much right there is it for uh, the HMS Illustrious. Should be a pretty uh, nice build and a nice carrier to add to your uh, World War II BAFTA build service fleet. Anyways, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into our first layer here, we have layer number one for the ship. One thing I want to mention uh, to go ahead and get started with, if you're completely new to my back to build tutorials, the way I like to structure these tutorials, is we're going to be building the first few layers here, uh, basically half on, half off. What this means is we're going to be building the center line of the ship and then the entire right side. It'll be up to you guys between <clears throat> layers to copy what we just did in, on the uh, layer we were just working on, copy from the right side over to the left side. It's pretty straightforward, and once we get through the first few or like the first layer too, it's gonna make a lot more sense. Um, and overall, it's really straightforward and pretty easy to do. And then once we start to get into some of the more difficult detailing and stuff like that, um, we'll be going ahead and doing both sides all together. 
Anyways, let's go ahead and get started with here. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to be going ahead and needing to position this properly in the water for it to actually work. So if you do want to have this in the water, which I imagine most of you guys are going to want to do, uh, you do want to make sure this is positioned correctly. As you can see here, this blue concrete is representing the water level, and you can see we have one block underneath the water level, just like that. This here is going to be uh, basically our center line. So we're going to start off by going ahead and placing down a brick wall. Again, if it's in the water, it's going to be underneath here, this brick or this blue concrete representing the water level. We have a brick wall, and then we're going to then place down a long row of red concrete that's going to go ahead and go all the way back to the rear here, a total of 40 blocks. So again, from that front uh, brick wall, going back for red concrete, it's going to be a total of 40 blocks. We're going to then place down a brick wall in the end here, a birch slab, and two brick walls like that going back. Once that's done, going back up to the front here, we're going to start working our way out to the sides. So we have our center line complete, and now to the sides, we're going to go to our second block from the front here. I'm going to place down two red stained glass paints to the side, a brick wall, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35 red concrete blocks back, followed by a brick top sub here on the end. Uh, once we have that done, going back up to the front, we're going to place down two red stained glass panes come off these two red concrete blocks followed by two brick walls and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25 red concrete blocks back followed by a brick upside down stair and a second brick upside down stair after that and we're going to then place down two end rods and then a birchwood slab coming off the end rod going ahead and double checking our count of red concrete here should be a total of 25 and then this inner row right here we want to make sure that this row right here is going to be a row of 35 so just like that with that done go ahead and go to the side here we're going to count back one two three and our fourth red concrete block we're going to go, we're going to go ahead and then go to the side of it we're going to place down a red stained glass pane followed by two three so you create a row of three here and then taking our brick stairs we're going to place down a row of one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14, 15, and 16. Uh, or sorry, it's going to be actually just 14 brick stairs and then two brick top slabs. After we have that done, we're going to then go to the fourth stair from the front. So one, two, three, four. And we're going to place down a acacia wood sign on the side of it. And then on the back here, we're going to go and go to the third stair from back. So one, two, and three. And then along this row here, we're just going to take our acacia wood signs and we're just going to place down acacia wood signs all the way along the side here of these brick stairs connecting the two signs together with one continuous and once we have that all complete there that's going to wrap up what we have here for layer one looking at from above this which we should have the top down view for this layer with that though let's go ahead and move into our next layer layer number two all right guys go ahead and move it into our next layer we go ahead and move it into layer two for layer two to go ahead and get started with here we're going to place down a red concrete block on top of this brick wall here in the front and then going back from it we're going to place down one two three and four red concrete blocks leave a total of five after that, go into the back here, we're going to place down a red concrete block on top of this brick wall, followed by one, two, three red concrete blocks back, and then a brick upside down stair on the very back. With that done, going back up to the front here, we're going to place down two red stained glass panes coming off the second and third red concrete block there, and then two brick walls back from those. We then want to place down one, two, three, four, five red concrete blocks back, two brick walls coming off the last two red concrete blocks, and then two red stained glass panes coming off those brick walls. Going back from the brick walls here, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 red concrete blocks. Same thing as before, two brick walls come off the side of those two blocks there. And then two red stained glass, or sorry, three red stained glass panes going forward like that. Once that's done, we're going to go and then take our red concrete. We're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 red concrete blocks back. Followed by two brick ups down stairs. And after those two brick ups downstairs, we're going to place down two brick top slabs. And after that, we're going to then place down two acacia wood trap doors going back. On the inside here, we're going to take our red concrete. We're going to place down two red concrete blocks on those two brick top slabs. And then additional two red concrete blocks going back next to those two acacia wood trap doors. And then one more that sticks out um, past those like so. Coming off that red concrete block there, we're going to place down two brick ups downstairs. Like so. And we're going to then place down a brick top slab like that. On the inside here, 
this red concrete block and place down a red concrete block here. Then one, two, three on the back stair of those top slabs and uh, upside down stairs. And on the very back here on both sides of this upside down stair of, red, of brick, we're going to place down a brick top slab. And once we have that all complete there, and that is going to basically wrap up what we have there for uh, layer number, <coughs> excuse me, layer number two. Uh, optional thing you can do as well is to fill this in. So if you want to, you can completely fill this in with red concrete. Up to you guys. I like my builds a little bit more solid, so I like to fill them in. But you don't really need to. This is kind of the bare minimum you'll need to make sure there's no holes on the outside. Anyways, that right there is going to conclude layer number two. And with that, let's move on to layer number three. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we'll be going ahead and moving into layer number three. Layer three here is going to be the last layer. We'll be going ahead and doing half on, half off. And from this layer on, we're going to be going ahead and doing basically all layers all together. Anyways, for this layer to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone block on top of this red concrete block, followed by additional three that go back, so you have a total of four there. We're going to go then also place down a, a light gray stainless paint right there on the front, coming off that stone block. After that, going ahead and moving to the back here, we just want to go ahead and place down a stone block on top of this uh, brick upside down stair. And if you have access to a debug stick, we can go ahead and use a debug stick and this iron trap door to basically make the iron trap door sit flat against the stone block. If you do not have access to that, then you can go ahead and either use a dark oak wood trap door or a birch wood trap door will work just as fine. So, uh, preferably an iron trap door, but if you don't have that, if you don't have a debug stick, then you're going to have to use one of those um, other options that I did list. Anyways, from this point here, going back up to the front, we're going to go and start working our way out to the sides. We're going to place down two light gray stainless pins, come off these two stone blocks here. And after that, we're going to go then place down two inside walls. Now the sides here, we are going to go ahead and grab ourselves some item frames, and we're going to go ahead and also grab ourselves some crossbows. We're going to place down a item frame on both sides that will be coming off this uh, stained glass pane right here, and we're going to rotate so that the, the um, crossbow is facing downwards. On the right side, we have one difference, and that's going to be we're going to place down an additional item frame with a crossbow in it on coming off this inside wall here, rotate also facing downwards. So this side has two anchors, the other side has one. Make sure you do pay close attention to that difference there on both sides. After that, going back from this inside wall, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five stone blocks. The last two stone blocks, we're going to place down two inside walls out to the side, and then two light gray stainless panes going forward. From this, we're going to go, ahead and go back from the walls, one, two, three, four, five, six stone blocks, then out to the side, one, two inside walls, and then two light gray stainless panes going forward. Go back from the walls, we're going to go ahead and then place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 uh, stone blocks back. We're going to go then grab our stone stairs, place down two stone stairs like this with black concrete blocks on the inside there of those stairs. Coming off this stair here, we're going to place down another uh, stone block, followed by two inside walls back, and we then want to go ahead and place down two light gray stainless panes back from those walls. On the inside here are the walls and the panes. We're going to place down four stone blocks, followed by an additional stone block that goes back like so. A andesite wall here on the end, and then another stone block right here next to the andesite wall. Um, and after we have that all done right there, that is going to basically wrap up the uh, back there. And obviously the same thing will be done over on the left side that we did on the right side. Again, pay close attention to that one difference we did up here, which is the um, anchors there. So make sure that both sides are um, having the uh, correct uh, look. Anyways, that right there is going to do it for this layer bit of a top-down view for you guys and with that we're going to be moving into layer four in which we're going to go and basically start doing the layer all together again you can fill the inside in with stone completely as you do want to as well um, but with that let's go ahead and move into layer number four all right guys moving into our next layer we have layer four layer four here is we're just going to start to get uh pretty extensive we do have a lot going on here and like this layer and layer number five here are probably gonna be our two longest layers of the build so just be aware of that as we move forward um, but to get started, we're going to be going ahead and building this whole layer all together. Um, so to begin with, we're going to be going ahead and placing down an andesite wall on top of this glass pane here, followed by a light gray stainless pane on both sides of that wall. We then want to go ahead and go back from the andesite wall, two stone blocks down the side or down the center, followed by two andesite walls to both sides like that. We're going to then go to the second wall here, we're going to place down an iron trap door to both sides like so. And then in the center here, we're going to place down two black concrete ba blocks back as well followed by two stone stairs to both sides like that. We then want to place down a row of three of stone blocks across like so with a light gray stainless pane to both sides and we can go ahead and place down a row of three of stone blocks across as well again a light gray stainless pane to both ends. Once we get to this section here we're going to go and then take our stone blocks we're going to go from this glass pane here one two three four five and six 
stone full blocks back and same thing over here one two three four five and six now at this point we're going to go to the ends or this the sides here of that row and we're going to go and start off by placing a stone top slab followed by a stone stair and then it's going to be two stone full blocks and then a stone up down stair and then a stone full block right here so just like this along the side here and we're going to do the same thing over here so stone top slab stone up down stair two stone full blocks stone up down stair and a stone full block like so going ahead and go into the side here of the stone up down stair here and these two stone full blocks are going to place down item frames and in those item frames are going to place down white beds rotate them like that so they're on their side and if you're on Java, we can go ahead and do a feature here where we place a dark liquid sign over the item frame. If you're on Bedrock, you're not able to do this feature. And if that's the case, just go ahead and use a just use the item frames and disregard the little sign detail, which is more of a bonus um, bit of piece of detail. But uh, go ahead and prioritize the uh, item frames like that. And obviously our dark liquid signs here along the side. Once that's done, uh, we then want to go ahead and take our uh, stone stairs here, and we're going to place down a stone stair to the side here. We're going to go then place down an additional stone stair. And after we have that done, we then want to go ahead and place down a stone stair facing this one, and an air stair like that. And on the inside here, we're just going to place down four black concrete blocks on the inside there of the stairs. And over here, we can do the, basically the same thing. So, just like that. After that's all done, uh, we're going to go and basically start doing each side separately at this point. So each side is going to be uh, different from each other, so just make sure that you're paying close attention. And we're going to start off with the left side here. The left side, we're going to go back from this stone stair, a total of one, two, three, four, and five. And yeah, five stone blocks back. And once we get to this point, we're going to grab our light gray stainless panes. We're going to place down five light gray stainless panes along those five stone blocks. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone stair like this, followed by a second stone stair, and a stair, stone stair facing that one. And behind these stairs, we're going to place down three black concrete blocks, and then a skeleton skull coming off this stair here to the side. From this, we're going to go ahead and take our stone blocks. We're going to go ahead and go back one, two, and three. On your third one here, we're going to place down a stone up down stair. We then want to place down, again, one, two, three, four, five stone blocks along the side here. Along the first four, we're going to place down iron trap doors, so one, two, three, four, and then a skeleton skull here on the fifth one. This section here, uh, we want to go ahead and then uh, place down two black concrete blocks here, a stone block, two black concrete blocks, and then another stone block like so on top of that stair, and cut off this stone uh, stair here, or stone block here, we're going to place down a stone up down stair, and we also want to go ahead and grab ourselves some beds, and we're going to place down beds kind of overhang on the side of the ship here like that uh, even with those spaces right there after that we're going to place down a stone block here after this one followed by a skeleton skull we're going to go ahead and actually sorry this is going to be a stone stair my bad so it's going to be a stone stair like that and then a black concrete block behind it we then want to place down a row of three of stone blocks back and coming off that row of three there uh, we're going to place down two stone ups down stairs so one two and then a, a stone top slab on the stu two stone ups down stairs, we're going to place down item frames, white beds, and those item frames like so. And again, the same technique we used up in the front here, we're going to go ahead and place down dark liquid signs on the sides there of those blocks. After that, uh, we're going to go then place down a andesite wall in this location here. And then come off the andesite wall, going back, we're going to place down two um, light gray stainless paints. On the inside here, we're going to place down one, two, three, and four stone blocks going back. And then from that, we're going to go ahead and go over one, two, three, and four to connect up to the inner andesite wall. On the back here, we're going to place down the andesite wall in the center, followed by two light gray stainless panes to both sides of that wall. Then, after we have that done, on the side here, we're going to go forward one, two, three, andesite wall to the side, and two light gray stainless panes there along the side, like that. Once we have that done, we're going to then place down a row of one, two, three stone blocks, two stone ups down stairs and a stone top slab just like that and we're going to then place down item frames there on the side of those two stairs or i should say the front of those two stairs and then white beds in those item frames like so with dark liquid signs on the sides there of the stairs like that after we have that done uh we then want to go and place down a stone stair located in this spot here followed by a black concrete block on the inside there and we're going to then place down a stone block on the back of the stair 
fall by an upside down stair coming off of it, like so. And we're also going to place down a skeleton skull coming off the side of the stair, like that. Once we have that done, uh, we then want to go ahead and place down uh, a set of two black concrete blocks like so. A stone block, two black concrete, and another stone block like that. Just like we did on the other side here, we're going to go ahead and place down a white bed. Kind of overhanging the side there in line with those spaces of two there. And after that, we're going to go then take our stone blocks. We're going to go ahead and count four to a row of six. So one, two, two, or so we already have this block here, so it's going to be five more after it. So one, two, three, four, five. On your fifth floor, we're going to place down an upside down stair like that. Followed by a row of one, two, three, four. Iron trap doors back and then an air skeleton skull like that. After that's done, we're going to then take our stone blocks. We're going to place down one, two uh, stone blocks going back. We're going to then place down a stone stair like this to both sides. And we then want to go and place down a nerve stone stair, which is going to be coming off this one like that going forward. And then black concrete blocks there on the sides of those blocks. Once that's done, we're going to then take our stone blocks and we're just going to go ahead and connect those uh, stairs there to that. And we're going to throw a fill in that side of the ship like so. And with that all done, the last thing also we want to do is to place down a skeleton school on the side of this stair right there. So after that's all done, that's pretty much going to wrap up this layer. Looking at it from above here, this is what we should have from the top down view with it all complete. And uh, with that, that's going to wrap up layer number four. And with that, let's move on to layer number five. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer five. Layer five here is probably going to be our longest layer. We have a lot of detail going in here and um, a lot to do. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the front here. We're going to place down a stone block on top of this andesite wall, followed by a stone up sound stair coming off of it both sides of the stone up down stair to place down a stone top slab and then a stone block um, on both sides of that um, block there in the center. After we have that done uh, we then want to go ahead and go back along the sides here and we're going to go ahead and place down a stone top slab to both sides like so and in this corner space here we're going to place down an iron trap door like that to both sides. At this point here we're going to place down another stone block in the center followed by actually a row three of stone blocks across and then a stone top slab to both sides. We're going to go then place down a stone or a row of five of stone full blocks across, followed by a stone slab out to the sides with a dark oak wood sign on the side of that slab. And then we're going to go ahead and also place down a skeleton school come off the side of this top slab here. After that we're going to place down a row of three of stone full blocks down the center here, followed by a stone upside down stair, and a skeleton school come off the front there of that upside down stair. Once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and then place down another row of three of stone blocks down the center here, upside down stair to both sides, followed by another row of three of stone blocks, and another upside down stair to both sides like that, with a skeleton school coming off the front there of the stairs. Uh, once we have that done, we're going to then take our stone blocks, and we're going to go ahead and do a row of five across. Skeleton school again to both sides. On the sides here, we're going to go ahead and then take our stone blocks, we're going to go ahead and go back one, two, three, four. Uh, stone blocks back over here same thing one two three and four we then want to go ahead and place down a light gray shulker box dark cuckoo fence gate opened up toward it right here light gray shulker box dark cuckoo fence gate opened up back toward it and same thing over here as well like so on the side there for our, our guns at this point here we want to go ahead and then place down a row of uh, or actually it's going to be a row of polished data sites. So we're going to go to the inside here and place down one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four polished data site. And we can go and just fill the inside in with stone here. Then at this point, we're going to go and then do a row of five of stone across, followed by an andesite wall to both sides. We're going to go and then do another row of five of stone across, followed by again a andesite wall to both sides. At this point here, we're going to go then place down an iron bar that's going to be coming off those blocks, those um, walls like so. We have a few options here that we can do. Um, this kind of is like a little bit of a cage mask type design. So I'm going to go ahead and use a debug stick here. And we can change the direction here of the uh, iron bar so it sticks off in all directions. So for example, we can have it stick to the west, south, and north. So we kind of create a shape like this. Alternatively, if you do not have a debug stick, you can go ahead and use a cobweb instead. But the iron bars do look better in this situation. So that's why we're going to be going ahead and using them. So same thing right here, just like that on both sides there for those iron bars or cobwebs, depending on what you choose.
this point here, we're going to then place down a row of seven of stone blocks across, followed by a second row of seven, then a third row. And at this point here, we're going to then grab our iron trap doors and on the right side here and place down an iron trap door here. And then one also right here. If, you're, uh, if your iron bar here does change, uh, make sure you do uh, fix that so it does go back and connect up. And over here on this side, we're just going to go ahead and go to the middle row. And we're just going to place down an anti wall there in that section like that. At this point here, uh, we then want to take our stone uh, blocks. And we're going to kind of do each side separately as we kind of get a little bit of a difference in our two sides here. Start off of our right side, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 stone blocks back. At this point here, we then want to go ahead and grab our... Uh, like gray stainless paint, we're gonna place down a light gray stainless paint here, followed by one, two, three, four, five, and the side walls back, and then there light gray stainless paint. We then also want to go ahead and grab our iron frames again, and also our white beds. We're gonna place down iron frames on the last four and the side walls, and we're gonna go ahead and place down white beds in those iron frames. Then uh, we just want to go ahead and very simply grab ourselves an iron bar, and we're gonna place down an iron bar above the skeleton skull here, and again we're gonna change the directions of it. So it's facing like that in all directions. Also, uh, one thing I want to cover as well is that up here on the front, uh, underneath this iron bar here, we're actually going to place down a skeleton skull underneath it. And the same thing will be done over here, come off the side of that stone block. So let's go ahead and make sure that change is applied to both sides. So all right, there's it for the right side for this portion. And we're going to go then move our direction or our tension over here to the left side. So the left side here is a little bit different. And um, to go ahead and build it, we're going to start off by placing down an andesite wall after this stone block here, stone brick slab, dark oak wood fence gate opened up toward the outside, and an andesite wall. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of three of stone full blocks behind those, like so. And then we're going to go ahead and place down two more stone blocks back and do the same thing. Andesite wall, stone brick slab, dark oak wood fence gate come off the slab, uh, opened up toward the slab like so and facing outwards, and then a uh, andesite wall here, and then a stone block. Then we want to go ahead and go behind these andesite walls and stone brick slabs and we're just going to go ahead and place down our, ant our stone blocks like that, filling that space in. And above this skeleton skull here, like we did on the other side, we're going to go ahead and place down an iron bar and change the directions of it so it's facing in all four directions, like so. Now uh, once you get to this point here, uh, we're going to kind of go back to both sides being symmetrical pretty much from all the way back. So to begin with, we're going to go ahead and go to our center space. And we can go ahead and fill this whole space in also with stone. Uh, we might as well do it now because we will have to do it later. Uh, as this is going to be basically the base here for the flight deck. So best now for us just to go ahead and fill this whole space in while we're at it. So once we have that full space in, we're going to go ahead and locate our center. And we're going to go ahead and place down a row of three of stone blocks like that out to the sides. And we're going to then do a second row of three like that. We're going to go then place down black concrete blocks to both sides. Followed by a white bed like that and also a iron trap door which is going to be on the right side here that's going to be coming off of this iron bar and again uh, if it does break our iron bar make sure that we do fix it at this point here we're going to then place down a row of five of stone blocks across followed by an inside wall to both sides and after that inside wall we're going to place down an anvil on top of the stone top slab with a skeleton skull coming off the back of the anvil a dark liquid sign on the side of the anvil. And lastly, a stone brick top slab coming off the uh, side of the anvil like that toward the rear of the ship. We then want to go ahead and uh, grab ourselves stone blocks. And coming off of the stone block here, we're going to go ahead and go back one, two, three, four, and um, five. And then the same thing over here one, two, three, four, and five. And then we can go ahead and fill this whole space in the middle here with stone blocks. At this point, uh, we then want to go ahead and uh, grab our gray carpet. We're going to place down a row of one, two, three, four, and then a stone block here. And over here, one, two, three, four, and a stone block. We're going to go then take our stone pressure plates. We're going to place down two stone pressure plates on top of those middle two iron trap doors, and then a chain like that on top of this last one here. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and place down an iron bar on top of these two stone blocks. And using our debug stick here, we're going to go and change directions so that they face in all directions. So 
So just like that. Then continuing on, we're going to take our stone blocks. We're going to go and do a row of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 across. And we're going to do a second row of 7. On both ends of that row of 7, we're going to place down levers and have them aimed downwards like so. Again, fix your iron bars if they do change. Same thing over here. Just like that. And we're going to do another row of 7 of stone blocks across, followed by an andesite wall to both sides. And we then want to go ahead and then do two more rows of seven across. So one and two. And we're going to then place down our levers like this, going down and connecting up to, or going down toward the bed. At this point, uh, we want to go and then place down a iron trap door here on both sides like so. And then stone blocks across between it. So row of seven. Coming off that iron trap door, we're going to go and grab ourselves an item frame. We're going to place down an item frame and then a snowball in the item frame. Same thing over here, like so. After that, uh, we're going to then place down an iron bar on top of this uh, skeleton skull here and then a row of seven of stone blocks across. We're going to do another row of seven of stone blocks across and then this time we're going to place down a light gray shulker box on both ends. And like we did before, a dark oak fence gate came off the shulker box like so. And then going forward from this, we're going to place down another light gray shulker box and another dark crooked fence gate coming off the shulker box like this. Um, opened up toward it like that on both sides there. And once we have that done there, uh, we then want to go ahead and take our stone blocks. And we're going to place down, or actually sorry, it's going to be our andesite walls. We're going to place down one, two, and three andesite walls. And same thing over here, one, two, and three andesite walls. With the row of one, two, three stone blocks, one, two, three. And on the inside here, we're going to place down one, two, three, and four polished andesite blocks, one, two, three, and four. And we can go ahead and just fill in the space between those two blocks and across there like that to fill that in completely. At this point here, uh, we also want to go ahead and grab our debug stick and we can go ahead and then edit this iron trap door by going ahead and changing the uh, facings of it so it face in all four directions and same thing will be done over here so just like that after that's all complete uh, we then want to go ahead and grab our light gray stainless panes we're going to place down two back from these walls on both sides and on the inside here we're going to place down a row five of stone blocks across we're going to go then place down a row of five of polished black stone stairs Followed by a row of five of polished blackstone slabs, and then a second row of five of polished blackstone slabs. Like this, going toward the rear. On both sides of the of this slab here, we're going to place down a dark oak sign. Like that. And also, we're going to place down item frames here on the sides of these light gray stainless panes with item frames in, or with uh, white beds in those item frames, like so. And once we have that all complete there, that's going to basically wrap up what we have there for layer number five. As I mentioned, this is probably going to be our longest layer here with a lot of detail going into place. But with that all out of the way, we're going to be going ahead and basically working on our flight deck, deck and superstructure from here on out. So it's going to be a little bit easier for us to go ahead and build. But anyways, that right there is going to do it for layer 5. Let's move on to layer number 6. Alright guys, so we're going ahead and moving into layer number 6 here. Layer 6, uh, we get the flight deck done and start to move into a kind tower and basically all of our other little details here and there around the ship. So to go ahead and get started with, we're going to be going ahead and working on the superstructure features and then we'll save the flight deck markings and all that stuff for the end. To begin with though, we're going to place down a iron bar on top of this one here. So basically the best thing to do is we're just going to go ahead and go to each one of these iron bars and we're just going to place down one more that goes up. So all the way around our uh, section. So we have four on each side, so we should have four of these iron bars on, on these sides. So at this point here, I'm going to go and then take a debug stick and I'm just going to change the directions of all of these to face in all four directions. Again, if you are doing the cobweb technique, then you're just going to place down cobwebs straight on top of all those four like so. So this is going to take a little bit for me to do. I'm going to go ahead and knock this out real quick and I'll see you guys back here in a sec once I have these all done. But again, same thing basically just applies to you guys. Alright guys, so at this point right here, you can see we have all of our iron bars done for um, those... Um, sections and at this point here we're going to go ahead and start working on all of our little details around the ship now for us to go ahead and get started with our first um, thing we're going to be going ahead and doing is we want to go ahead and start off by going ahead and go into the section here where the iron trap doors are we're going to place tiny brick slab here stone brick slab here and a dark oak fence key like that opened up toward those um, 
opened up toward those slabs just like so. Again, if your uh, debug stick or whatever gets messed up, just go ahead and make sure you fix that. Anyways, once we get to this point here, we're going to then place down two light gray stained glass panes, followed by a row of two of inside walls, followed by a second, third, fourth, fifth, six, and uh, actually, sorry, we're just going to go ahead and do a total of five of these rows of two like that across. And on the sides here, we're going to place down one and two dark oak wood signs like so, followed by a row of one, two, three, four item frames with white beds in those item frames rotated on their sides like so. We're also going to go ahead and go ahead, if we're on Java, place down dark oak wood signs over the sides there of those item frames like that. And then at this point here, we're going to place down two andesite walls like this along the side here. And we're going to go ahead and place down our dark oak wood signs along the side there of those andesite walls. With this done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a iron bar here. And also a light gray stainless pane in this section here. This iron bar, we are going to go ahead and use a debug stick for. And we are going to go ahead and edit it so that we have it facing in all four directions like so. And one thing I would also recommend right here is to go ahead and actually disconnect this wall um, from that trap door or from that iron bar like so. Uh, not really a priority but something I would recommend doing just kind of helps uh, keep those two things separate from each other. Uh, anyways once we get to this point here we're going to then place down a stone brick slab which is going to be on top of this bed here and then a dark oak fence gate coming off to the side here and again if your uh, you know iron bars here do get messed up just go ahead and very simply uh, replace them so a little bit annoying I know but it's kind of part of the process here of building that so something like that and then we want to go ahead and grab ourselves a grindstone we're going to place down a grindstone here on top of the anvil and from that we're going to place down a lever on top of the stone brick top slab followed by a stone brick slab we're going to go ahead and place down an iron bar and using our same techniques here with the debug stick and also using a dark oak sign on the outside here of this iron bar. We're going to go ahead and change the properties so that it's facing like this. Not waterlogged, but like so. And also to this side here. So like that, all four sides. And then we're going to place down a stone brick slab here. Again, your iron trap doors for your um, iron bars here might get messed up, and we can just very simply replace those. So just like that. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone brick stair, which is going to go on top of this section here, and we're going to then place down a skeleton skull to the two sides of it like so. And that right there is it for the right side, going ahead and moving to the left side here, we're going to place down a stone brick stair on top of this right here. Skeleton skull to both sides. And again, fix anything that does get messed up. Iron bar wise. Like that. After we have that done, we're going to then go back to our crane here. We're going to place down a grindstone here. Lever. Flicked forward like so. We're going to then place down our stone brick slab. Followed by our iron bar. And then our stone brick slab here. And then we want to go and place our dark oak sign on the side of this iron bar, and we're going to then again use our technique here to change the direction, and also make sure to fix this one if it does get messed up for you. Then right here, we're just going to place down another stone brick stair on top of this wall right here, with the skeleton skull on both sides, so just like that. And that right there will basically complete the uh, detail there around the sides. At this point here, we're going to go and now start working onto our deck details. For our deck details here, we want to start off by taking our white carpet. We're going to go and skip one block from the front. And we're just going to run white carpet all the way along the center here of the flight deck. So this is just going to run all the way along down the center here. So just like this. And it's going to stop right here when you get to this last polished andesite block. We then want to take stone buttons and on top of these polished andesite blocks here, we're going to place down a row of four going forward and then same thing up here row of four just like that after that's all done we want to go and then grab ourselves rails we're going to count back on to the left side we're going to count back three spaces so one two three and our fourth here we're going to place down a row of one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and thirteen uh rails going back like so 
At this point here, the rest of the flight deck is pretty much ours to just fill in with um, gray carpet. So I'm just going to go and basically show you guys how to do the outline here. And it's pretty straightforward. We're just going to go ahead and kind of go out to the sides here. Like so. Again, your iron bars might get messed up. It's kind of unfortunate, but just kind of part of the part of the building here. It's kind of kind of crappy, but is what it is. Um, it is going to go above this section here. Just so make sure that gets translated. And it's just going to run all the way along the side here. And at this point here, it's going to stop on this last andesite wall right here. And then just cut right across over on these walls here. And it's just going to run all the way along the the side here. So just like this. Uh, the one part it won't go over is where these gun positions are. So we're actually going to leave that alone and kind of follow the outline here with stone blocks. And right here, this is also going to cover these two walls like that. And after that's done, we then want to go ahead and uh, take our gray carpet. And all the remaining stuff, we're just going to go ahead and fill in with gray carpet. So this space here. Then going back, this whole area as well will be filled in. So just like this. Filling it all in and continuing the same thing going back. And filling this in here. like so and once we have that all filled in right there that is going to pretty much do it for this layer and with that that will conclude what we have there for layer number six looking at it from a top down view this is what we should have and uh with that we'll go ahead and move into our next layer layer number seven all right guys so going ahead and moving into actually our final layers we're gonna be doing layers seven through fourteen they're pretty simple layers so i just thought we would do it all together um just to go ahead and knock them out and get this build finished anyways for us to go ahead and get started with here we're gonna start off by place down a stone uh stair on top of this um uh, gray sting west block and we're just gonna take our stone stairs go back one two three four five uh, back from it uh, along the side there and then on the other side here we're gonna go ahead and place down a corner stair come off this one and then back one two three four and five stone stairs so just like we did on the other side we then want to take dark liquid signs and this is gonna be a little bit of a time consuming process but we're just gonna go ahead and basically wrap this all the way around these stairs so just go all the way around like so And that right there will basically finish that off. At this point here, we're going to go and then place down a stone brick slab here with a dark oak wood fence cake coming off the stone brick slab like that facing toward the rear. And then at this point, uh, we then want to go ahead and place down a iron bar in this section here. We're going to go ahead and use our debug stick to change the directions here. And we're going to go ahead and make it kind of that, uh, you know, facing all four directions. And we're going to go and then do this one more time. So one more iron bar up. And same thing, going out in all four directions. Like so. And we then want to go ahead and grab a skeleton skull. We're going to place down a skeleton skull that's going to be on top of this uh, stone stair. So right there. And we're going to go and then grab our stone blocks here. And we want to go and place down two stone blocks going forward from it. And we're going to then place down two like gray with panes on this side here. After that, uh, we want to go take our stone blocks and on the left side or the right side here of the bridge, place down two stone blocks going forward and then two andesite walls going forward. Then across the front here, we're going to place down two andesite walls. We're going to then grab item frames and we're going to then grab some black concrete blocks. We're going to place down item frames around these uh, two walls here, black concrete blocks in those item frames. And if you have if you're on Java, dark liquid signs over the side there of those walls like so. After that, uh, we want to go and then place down a stone brick slab that's going to go on top of this andesite wall here. And we're going to go and then place down a stone or andesite wall here, followed by a stone brick stair on top here. And after that, we're going to go and then place down skeleton skulls on both sides of the stone brick stair. We then want to go ahead and also place down a oak wood trap door on top of this stair here. Once that's done, we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence gate here, open it up toward the rear of the ship, an air fence gate on top of it, open it up toward the stair, and we're going to go then place down a row of 
um, iron bar or end rods out to the side. So just an end rod out to both sides of this fence gate. A andesite wall on top of it, another end rod out to both sides like so. And then on top of this uh, andesite wall, we're going to place down another um, end rod going up, followed by a iron bar on top, and then one out to both sides. And then we're going to place down another iron bar or another end rod on top of that center iron bar, and then a end rod out to both sides of that top one. After that, this section here, we're going to go ahead and place down two stone blocks on top of these two here. Two inside walls going up the side, like so. And up on the top here for the funnel, we're going to place down two polished black stone slabs. And two wither skeleton skulls here at slight angles. Just like that to go ahead and make the uh, funnel there for the ship. Then going to this section here, our iron bar on top of it, we're going to place down an andesite wall. So just like that. And then going up from the andesite wall, we're going to place down a total of two end rods, so one, two, and then an end rod to both sides of the first one, like that, for that rear mass. At this point here, the last thing we need to do for this ship is to just go ahead and go around to each one of these iron bar uh, pieces, and we're just going to go ahead and go up two end rods, like so. And uh, it's just going to be for all these uh, masts that stick out, or stick up the sides here. So like that, and the ones up here in the front as well. And then after we have that done, on the tops here, we're just going to go ahead and place down skeleton skulls, like so. Boom. Boom. And boom. Boom. And then our last three. Just like that. And once we have that all done there, that right there is going to pretty much wrap that up. And with that, that's going to wrap up my design here for the HMS Illustrious, Illustrious Class Aircraft Carrier. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this build and are able to put it to good use. If you do end up using this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This is me thinking from a solid build, link to my channel or this video if this does bring any social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, your freezer for a project you guys are working on. And that, guys, thank you guys again so much for watching. Again, big special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. And as always, don't forget to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that, though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been here to before, and I'll see you guys next time.